So I recently shared a couple of really powerful ways to promote your show and your brand. Number one being to be a guest on other people's shows, which I talked about in another video into a little more depth. But in, but really a huge way is to take that one recording and split it up into all this other content and get it out to every every inch of the internet. You know, Edison Research and NPR recently did a study and released it that talks about how people find podcasts and a spoken word audio, things which includes podcasts. And the top ways were number one was search results. So people go onto Google or another search engine and they search for terms, they find information on the topic, and then they end up on a podcast. So if you really think about that, that means that you have so much control over whether or not someone's going to find your podcast. Number two, the second way that people found podcasts was through referral. So someone telling them like, hey, you should listen to this podcast. We've all had those people in our lives. So that's really great. Number three was through social media. So again, you can control this. So why aren't we doing more to do it? I look at a lot of podcasts and they're you know, recording all these episodes, which is great. I mean, record, 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 right? But what if you took one recording and you turned that into 41 plus pieces of content that you can push out across to different platforms? Number one is you can make a, a blog post that, well, a lot of us, there's show notes. So number one, always make show notes. And yes, always have your own website. I get asked this all the time. It's like, should I put it on my own website or should I use Anchor or should I use Libsyn or, you know, should I just send people to those sites? No, you can control the SEO. And, and every time that you link a social media post or anything to your show notes, you want that on your website because you will be building the SEO, the traffic, the, uh, the relevance online and bringing your score up by holding the control to that. So please please, please do your own show notes. And there are ways to do it automatically. Uh, you know, we do ours custom, which is obviously my preferred way, because again, I'm all about controlling the search. I want people to find it. I don't want to leave all that up to chance. So every single recording that we do, it's, it's time spent, it's effort, it's energy. I don't know about you, but as a host at the end of an interview, I'm kind of done. Like I can only do two interviews a day and they can't be too late in the afternoon. So I like have set times. This is when I do my interviews because I mean, I'm doing all these things. We have uh, what we call um, flex your curiosity, where we talk about how to be curious and how to have a really good interview with somebody. So that means that at the end of the hour, psh, peace out, I'm done. So I don't just want to take that and put one social media post out and boom, I'm done. I want to take that we, you know, for us, what we do is we create, um, you know, we create three video clips that are 30 to 60 seconds. We wrap them in different sizes. We've got wrappers for it. We've got subtitles. We've got, uh, we'll pull <clears throat> four different quotes. We have uh, a screenshot from the actual interview itself. We've got our episode art that we create custom for everyone. These are things that you can do. Does it take time? Yes, it does. But it, you know, for us, we, we systematize it. So, you know, obviously if you need help, definitely let us know because we have systems to do it. So as a host, I don't want to be doing all that. Like I, if I had to worry about all that in, a, I mean, I do technically, I train people on how to do it, but, but as a host, when I'm, when I, you know, I've got my CVP is working on it. I just want to host. I want to like create the content. I want to be, you know, having sales calls. I want to be talking about people, talking to people beyond the interview I don't want to be worried about, you know, how many posts, what's the quote, all those things. I don't want to be worrying about it. But the fact when you systematize it, when you say like, th these are the things that we're going to pull out. So if you make that list of content that you want and you create a process around it, that's how you can then hire people to do it for you and get that off your plate, but still get more out of each podcast episode so that you're taking that time that you spent interviewing and you're breaking it up and you're pushing it out across the internet so that people can find you. They're finding you on, on every platform of social media that, you know, that you want out there. You've got your, your show notes. You can even write a blog post. In addition to it, you can do a press release. You know, some of these people you interview, you know, with our podcasters, we always talk about having these rock stars on your show. So we've got, you know, different segments and one of them are rock stars in their industry or just in their life. 
And that's worth a press release. You know, you have someone really great on there, especially if that person has an announcement. So if they come on, they have a book release, that might be a good time to put that investment into having a press release. You know, I see a lot of people where they're like, oh, I don't want to do a podcast because I'm going to put all this money into press releases. I've actually had two people tell me that in the last year. And I thought, that's so weird. Like, it seems like we're trying to manufacture content when really we could sit and have these conversations and provide value and build an audience. And at the same time, build that huge following and build our business. I hope that helps. Happy podcasting.